some of you guys know I'm doing a giveaway. All you got to do to enter is just text me right here. October 31st on Halloween day, I'm going to announce the winner. I got some Dame 7s right here and the lime green. We got some Dame 7s right here and the blood orange. We got Donovan Mitchells and a bunch of different colorways with his Crayola collab. Right, we got Jasmine Jam. We have the banana yellow right there. And of course the sky blue. So just make sure you text me right now, watch the full video and make sure you're subscribed. So today you're gonna to be giving some tips on jumping. What is your vertical and what is your height? I have a 48 inch vertical and I'm six foot one inch. So the first question I gotta ask you is what did you do to get your bounce? Getting my bounce was pretty hard. Uh, over time, all I did was make sure I continue to try to dunk low goals, tall goals. I made sure that I jumped all the time. Um, whether I was at home, at the park, at the gym, I wanted to make sure I always was trying to dunk at the goal. Okay. Now someone just asked a question, they said, if you could only do three workouts for the rest of your life for jumping, what three workouts would you choose? That's a tough one, um, but because with dunking you need a lot of different things, you need to focus on your balance, I would do a single leg deadlifts or reach downs, focusing on my single leg balance, making sure I can control it on the way down, on the way up, that will help you with your single leg bounce. I will also make sure I'm doing some jump squats, work on that two-legged bounce, um, and then I will also work on some reverse lunges. Reverse lunges are gonna be good, low impact on your knees to make sure your joints stay nice and healthy. Beautiful, beautiful, love it, cool. Now someone also asked, how long does it take on average to gain, let's say, maybe three inches or so? So if you're trying to work on your vertical, how long does it roughly take to start to gain? One thing you guys need to know that um, progress is gonna come over time. Uh, don't think that you're gonna just start your workouts and get a, a 40 inch vertical overnight or over a course of three months. It's gonna take a lot of time. I would say to add inches to your vertical, you're gonna have to be consistent with your workouts and it could be anywhere between three to six months. But make sure you're progressive, working hard every day, and you have, if you have a goal in mind, you can accomplish it. Beautiful. Okay, next question someone wanted to ask, is flexibility one of the most important things when it comes to jumping? Flexibility and mobility is gonna be key when it comes to jumping high. You're gonna make sure that you can be able to distribute that mass or that force that you're putting into the ground through your body and being able to land properly. And you wanna make sure you're nice and flexible be, to be able to contort your body in different angles, different ways when you're dunking in the air. And then how do you feel about jumping rope? And is that a very important workout? Jumping rope is key. Um, so it's gonna be lower impact early on. If you can't jump that high and you wanna develop the proper muscles, the proper flexibility and the proper technique to be able to jump, you wanna use jumping rope to build your VO2 max up or your cardiovascular system up so you can be able to jump repetitively over a course of a long game or a long workout. Okay. How do you change your workouts? You said it takes maybe three to four months or so maybe until you start to see some sort of improvement. So after that three or four months goes, do you continue the same workouts or do you switch them up? Um, it's all subjective. You can stay on the same program and continue to progress slowly over time, but one key thing is tricking your muscles up a little bit, switching your workouts to make sure that your muscle groups or your body doesn't get used to doing the same workouts over and over and over again. If you confuse your muscles or trick them up a little bit, you might see a little bit more growth than if you do the same thing over and over again. Okay. Now what's your biggest, or what's the biggest difference between one foot and two foot bounce? And then give me a tip for a one foot jumper and a two foot jumper. The biggest difference between one foot and two foot uh, jumps or dunks, um, it all depends on the situation that you're in. Um, sometimes you might wanna catch a defender slipping, a one foot dunk might be better for you. Um, you wanna make sure that you have proper landing room because if you jump off of one foot, it's gonna be easier to be off balance. Two feet is gonna be easier in traffic. If you might, you know, take some contact, take a bump, you wanna and one, uh, a two foot dunk is gonna be more beneficial for you. Um, for a one foot jumper, I would suggest that you wanna make sure that you keep your core nice and tight, get nice and low the step before you're about to take off, and then explode up off of two feet. Beautiful, good. Someone asked, how do you palm the basketball when you dunk it? Or if you can't palm it, what's another way that you can still dunk it? There's so many different ways that you can dunk a basketball. If you're not able to palm a basketball, you might be able to cuff it, or you wanna make sure you get your hand above the basketball to be able to slam it down nice and tall. Cool. Um, someone wanted to know if I'm 5'11", if I'm 5'9", if I'm 5'7", can I dunk? 
oh, there's no height requirement to be able to dunk. Some of the best dunkers are actually 5'9 and under. So all the tips that I would give somebody who's six foot and taller are the same tips I would give anybody that's shorter than six feet. Just make sure you're persistent with your workouts and you're doing the right things to keep your core nice and strong and you're controlling your center of mass as you're attempting to jump. The biggest thing, you wanna make sure you're bringing a lot of velocity or speed into your approach to make sure you can jump a lot higher. Okay, two more questions. Someone wanted to know about their diet and what things they should be eating and drinking, of course. Okay, one big thing with your diet, you wanna make sure you're eating really clean, stay away from sugars, uh, things that are high in sugar, so stay away from the soda, guys. I know it might be hard, um, so anything that's high in sugar, you wanna make sure you're staying away from that. Um, and then, make sure you guys are eating a lot of vegetables, a lot of fruits and vegetables, and getting your protein in so you can be nice and strong and build those muscle groups up properly. Cool, and last question. If you were to have a leg day, what workouts would you do in your leg day? I know you explained three of them already, but what like complete circuit would you do for your leg day? For my leg days, I would do a lot of different types of deadlifts. So as I mentioned before, I would do single leg deadlifts, right? Then you got the two-legged deadlift here. You got your squats. But if you want to develop nice, good one-legged jump technique, you want to isolate one leg at a time on your lunges, on your deadlifts, or anything, find different variations so that you can do things single leg and isometric motions. So also I like to do Bulgarian or rear, rear leg elevated split squats. So that's gonna have your rear leg elevated onto something. So it means you're gonna have your rear leg elevated on something behind you, and you're gonna be able to squat down just like this. Let me show you guys one more time. Different angle. Rear leg elevated squat. Leg elevated on something, and you're gonna squat down nice and tall. That's gonna help you guys build that one-legged bounce that you want to be able to fly high through the sky. Hmm. So you, you talked about different workouts that you can do with weights and squats and et cetera, but what about plyometrics or speed training and such? Plyometrics are gonna be key in developing that, that quick muscle twitch, that quick muscle fiber, and being able to jump a little bit higher. Um, one thing with your plyometrics is you wanna trick your muscles up a little bit and be able to land different ways. So a lot of people are just, when they're jumping off of a box, they're landing with two feet, right? You guys have to trick it up a little bit. So sometimes you have to, just like in a basketball game, you're gonna land one, two. All right, so you gotta learn how to be able to land different types of ways because in a basketball game, you're gonna be forced to land different type of ways and if you're not comfortable landing that type of way, you're gonna injure yourself. So yes, one leg, you don't wanna just land on one leg, but you wanna do the one two and be comfortable landing just like that because in game situations, you never know what's gonna happen. Big shout out to Ryan and the Hoop House for having me. You guys take all these tips to the gym and I'm sure you guys will be jumping high and ducking in no time. Thanks, Ryan. Y'all do, do your thing first. Man, Ryan got it.